Hey there, this is Larry. Um, I wanted to do a, a tutorial on how to collaborate using Studio One between different musicians in different areas of the country or the world. Um, and uh, so I'll give you a fair note of uh, warning. I've shamelessly stolen this from a guy named Marcus Huskins. You're welcome to look up his uh, video as well. He is obviously a power user professional, so his, his um, tutorial is at a pretty advanced level, um, and uh, us more beginner types might want something that's uh, just a little more uh, detailed and goes into some more of the basics. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Um, so how does this all work? How would we collaborate using Studio One? Well. Um, the trick is we're going to try to use Dropbox, okay? And Dropbox, of course, is great. Everybody's got a Dropbox. Hopefully some of us have paid plans with bigger Dropboxes. But here's how this is going to work. We're going to have Musician One over here using a local Studio One project. We're going to have Musician Two also using a local Studio One project. And then we're going to have a third project that's in a Dropbox folder that's going to be used pretty much exclusively for sharing uh, tracks and various other uh, project files between these two. Um, now, you can ask, why don't both of these users just go ahead and use this Studio One project? Well, the fact that it's in a Dropbox means it's going to be slower. Um, it's going to be slower to save files, restore files. It's going to give you all sorts of annoying messages. Basically, it's going to be a pain in the ass to try to actually work inside this, this project. So you really just want to use it for setup and then for extracting and pushing new files to. So this is essentially your sharing project. And you don't want it to be as big as these guys. These guys, you're going to be using wave format files. They're going to be huge. They, they could be you know, several hundred megabytes uh, of, of project stuff working on a song. You really don't want to be pushing all of that through your Dropbox. So what we want to do is try to get down to the essentials. Um, this particular model, Musician One, and that's going to be me for right now, is going to be creating this Dropbox um, project. And then other musicians are going to be pulling files from it, pushing uh, stems back to it, and, and vice versa. So we can actually do collaboration. All right, so that's how this is intended to work. Now, here's my little song sample project. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of a mess. It's all, it's all chopped up. There's all sorts of loops in here. There's a virtual instrument track. You know, there's at least one audio track, vocal track. Normally, you have more audio tracks than this. But this is a good example because it's kind of a messy project. Um, you notice it does have a chord track. Um, if you're relatively a Studio One beginner, you may not want to use chord and tempo tracks just yet, but we'll get to them, so we might as well plan from them right off. So I've got this. I've worked on it a little bit, and now I'd like to go ahead and share this and create my little Dropbox shareable project so that someone else can start maybe adding bass lines or guitar lines or more vocals or whatever, right? Um, the first thing you want to do, first thing you want to do um, is understand where your files are stored in Studio One. So if we went over here and we pulled up the File Explorer on Windows, we're, we're in Windows, this could work on Mac just as well. Um, but in Documents, Studio One Songs, that's where you're going to find all of your songs. This particular one is here in this folder named by the song name, Where Legends Go. And you're going to have a cache and a history and a media and then the song file itself, which is called Legends, or, or uh, Where Legends Go, a Studio One song and maybe some other files in here too. This is going to be where your local project resides. All right, so we're going to refer back to this. Studio, Document Studio One Songs. That's where your, your songs are going to be on your local computer. Now, what we want to do is we'd like to export the essential 
stems from here. Notice I've got my mixer window up. That's the F3. You can you can get that backing up by, by doing F3. And it pretty much mirrors what's down here with a couple of extra things for instrument stuff and all. But this is where you'd actually do your mixes with your panning and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is you probably may already know this if you poked around with Studio One, but under Options, you've got your song setup. And this is really important um, because um, we're going to have a default song set up. And this is where you're going to define where your, um, uh, where your inputs and outputs go to. Um, so, uh, for example, I'd have my, my uh, stereo inputs and stuff like that applied here, right? Um, so it's important to keep this song set up working, it's going to be different for Musician 1 and Musician 2. You're on different systems. You'll have different microphones, different inputs, different hardware. So you'll always want to have a default. You can take whatever it is and make it the default. And then when you pull up the samples, the shared song, you're going to want to reset to that default. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we want to export our song stems. And we're going to start by selecting the loop. Okay, we want to select a loop that includes the whole song all the way out through the final fade out notes. All right, that's going to be what we're exporting. Next, we want to go to the song menu here, and we're going to want to say um, export stems. All right. Export stems. Each one of these guys is a stem. Each one of these channels is a stem. We can choose to export channels or tracks. Channels essentially are these guys down here in your channel mixer. Tracks are up here, specifically these guys. We want to do channels. Reason being, we want to actually make sure everything is synced up to the very beginning. We're getting the whole thing on each one so that everything that we export is from point zero, regardless of how I'm chopped up in here. All right. And we want to be able to select certain things. Like I might have all these things selected initially. I don't want that stuff. I want the stuff that's actually in my mixer. That's what I'm listening to. My drum loop, my vocal, my bass, my guitar pick, my mando, my strat, and my accent chorus. Okay. Those are the only channels here that actually have music on them. If I were to play that, then, then those are the ones you'd actually hear. And those are the ones, ones you want to have checked here. Um, you can select none and then just check the ones that you want. Um, it might be that you're actually using submixes, like you've got a whole bunch of drums mixed into one drum bus channel. You only want to export that drum bus, all right? Anything you want to share, check it, okay? Um, next, this is going to be the standard default location. It's going to go into your song folder in a little subfolder called stems. That's where you want this to go. Um, usually you want to put the file name prefix on there. Change this. It's probably set to wave right now. Change this to aug vorbis. The reason you want to do that, and then move this quality thing up to 100%. The reason you want Aug Vorbis is it's the most compact, lossless format. It's going to be the smallest amount of disk space in your Dropbox, but it's going to give you perfect quality. Okay, Aug Vorbis, 100%. Export range is between the loop. We just set up our loop. That's what we're going to export. Make sure this box right here, Import to Track, is selected. Check the right, right tempo to audio files, preserve mono. Okay, got everything set up, hit OK. Now what this is going to do, uh, and I might get a clipping, I've got a clipping indicator here. Okay, big deal, right? Um, <clears throat> I probably ought to reduce the volume of that one track, but that's not fatal. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and, and take each one of these tracks down here and it's going to create a new stem that's audio. It, like, for example, um, uh, one of my tracks here was an instrument track. It's going to change it over to audio. So everything is going to come in audio. That's what you want. All right. 
And uh, this will take a little while, but um, depending on how many tracks you've got. But um, like I said, if you don't want every single track on here, just don't include them. Include the, the mixes that you want. Um, okay, so we're good. Uh, it says, oh, I did a couple of clipping things. Do you want to delete? No, I don't want to delete. Keep them. All right. And here we go. Now what's happened is you notice that it's put several new tracks into my song. Okay, these are my stems. Now I like to distinguish those from my other tracks. So I'm going to all make them one color. I'm going to make them yellow or something like that, right? Okay, so, so I can tell that these are my actual stems. The other thing that I'm going to do while I got all of those guys selected is I'm going to group the selected traps, tracks and name this stems. Okay, now what I've done is these new files that I've got in here, normally I'm not going to want to pay attention to them. They're, they're just my, my stems for export. I may recreate them, but um, uh, I, I want to keep them all in one group um, so that I can uh, listen to them or ignore them as necessary. The last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to go down to my mixer here. All right. And see where I've got all these stems. I'm going to select them and do um, add bus for selected channels. All right. This is going to be called bus one by default. I'm going to call it stems again. All right. Um, and then this is going to be my stems bus. So if I can, if I want to listen to the stems, in other words, what I'm, I'm going to be exporting or importing, that's how I would go ahead and do that. All right. Um, so um, just as an example, if I wanted to hide, I could say hide related channels and all my stems go away. And I could show related channels and all my stems come back here. So if I don't want them cluttering up my mixer, I just go to my stems bus and say hide related channels. Okay. All right, so we've done that. Um, now what I want to do, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show those channels uh, right now. So I make sure they're all available. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my song. So I have saved my stems in here, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new project or a new song. All right, why am I creating this new song? This is my Dropbox song. So I'm going to call this um, Legends Share. Okay, and I'm going to put this in my Dropbox folder. All right, so somewhere in here in my Dropbox, I created something called Studio One. Here, Studio One Share. That's the folder I'm going to select. I'm not going to try to create a new folder in here because Studio One is going to do that for me. I'm just going to select that folder. I say I want to create a new song called Legend Share. I want to create it in my Dropbox Studio One Share. I'm going to take all my default things, just an empty song, and say OK. OK, now I've got an empty song. It's called Legend Share. It's in my Dropbox. I'm going to go up to Song. And what I'm going to do there is import song data. OK. Um, and I'm going to go back to my Studio One songs where legends go. Remember, we just we just uh, browsed there a little while back and I want to select that song file and open it. OK, now what do I want to grab from this song? I want to grab my tempo, my marker, my chord tracks. OK, I want to ignore all those things. OK, because those are my local chopped up things. And I want to select these stem tracks. Okay, these are the stems that I just 
brought in. That's what I want. I want to make sure events is, is uh, selected. Okay. I want to copy the files to the song folder. Okay. And that's everything that I need. I'm going to say OK. And what it's going to do now is it's going to bring in those stems from my other local project. They are now coming into my shared Dropbox project. And remember we talked about options, song setup, um, and I can say reset to default. Okay, and that way I've got all my my uh, um, uh, inputs and outputs set up the way they're supposed to be. Okay, so I should actually be able to listen to my my new song now. Okay, and it's all going to be audio. All right, so that's there, um, and. Everything is working the way it's supposed to. We've got just the tracks that we want in here. And um, the other thing that we've brought in is we've actually brought in our chord track. So you've got this. You've got your chords. You've got your tempos, tempo track over here, or uh, the arranger track, anything like that. All those guys are, are actually live and working. Okay, so everything is set up, ready to go. Um, you'll be ready to pull these things into another project and crank up your own tracks. Save that. And now we have created our Dropbox project. That's going to be your principal thing that you're going to be sharing. Okay. Now I can close that. And I go back to my own local project. And all is good. And like I said, if I'm annoyed by these things, just go to stems, hide related channels, and you won't have to see them. They're there. You won't have to see them. They won't be in your mix. So all is good. You can continue working, continue adding tracks uh, as much as you want. Now, over on the other side of the pond or Zimbabwe or wherever Musician 2 is, you're going to be working with your own project. And guess what you can do? You can say import song data and you can pull up that um, that same project um, the studio one share legend share and guess what there's your song you can open it okay and then you can pull in any of these things that you want okay including the tempo marker and chord tracks all those things could come straight into your project just by saying OK. You'll get exactly those same things. OK. When you've done re-recording and adding some tracks or whatever and you want to export them, use exactly that same process. You go up to Song. You select the, you export stems. You select your new tracks, whatever they may be. OK. And then you Point it to the shared Dropbox um, song, and then you say OK, and it will export the stems right into that folder again. That's how you're going to take it. all the stems get dropped into that shared Dropbox folder. All the new stems get pulled out of that folder. That's basically the concept. So um, this is kind of confusing. I get it. But this is uh, the way the pros are actually doing the collaboration right now in Studio One, and it should actually work for you. So I'm going to close this down. It's kind of a long video. Uh, good luck with it, and we'll, uh, we'll answer some questions.